Welcome to another edition of Totally Awesome Fishing, where we try and catch you the fish the fastest way we can and the easiest way we can. And what I want to talk to you today, very briefly, is about bait, and we're going to go carp fishing. Now, how complicated can carp fishing really be? Well, really complicated if you read everything in magazines and books, other programs. I'm going to tell you how to catch carp the easy way. You don't need all these fancy different flavour baits, you need it really basic. I'll tell you how basic. Come and have a look what I'm going to be using. Well, I'll tell you one of the easiest baits you're going to get to use is bread. And I mean, it's really good. There's already a guy fishing in this swim. And look, this is how good bread is. This poor, this poor guy's got a broken wing by the look of it. Now, that's my finger. That's my finger. I think he's short-sighted and should have got a spec savers. So you can use bread. But I'll tell you what I'm going to be using, not just bread, just like he's actually choking on this, not just bread. Do you know what I'm going to catch carp on today? Sit back, relax. I'm going to catch them on a full roast dinner. I mean, I really am not joking when I say I've got a roast dinner here. It's one of those pre-cooked ones that you can buy from the freezer centres. It's been cooked at whatever it says, gas mark, whatever. And there is the full roast dinner. So I intend trying to catch carp on Yorkshire pudding, roast potatoes, roast beef, carrots and peas. And if I think there's anything they might balk at, it's going to be the peas. Now if I can catch all these carp on a, on a roast dinner for £1.50, you've really got to ask yourself what's the point in buying all those fancy baits. But we should go see if we can catch something on them. Let's give it a go. Well the first thing you're going to do if you're going fishing seriously with a roast dinner is of course you've got to try it out yourself. And there we go, we've got the roast dinner, it's totally cooked, it's cold, some gravy on that. Well, I'll tell you what, it might be a bit cold but it's not halfway bad. Hmm. Right, let's see what the carp think of it. Right, you want classic roast beef gear. Fixed ball reel, four pound line, Avon rod, single hook, barbless. And I think, to be honest, the first thing I'm gonna try is a lovely bit of Yorkshire pudding. Here comes Charlie the Canada Goose. He spotted the Yorkshire pudding. Sorry chum, it's going to a good cause. Yeah, clear off, he's gonna eat it. No, oh, no, no. This is for my friends the carp. There we go, I've just nicked a piece of Yorkshire pudding on the hook. Give me a minute, and I reckon we're going to get a take. Out we go, out we go. Let's move that a bit. Oh, this one. Go oh, he's on. Yorkshire pudding. Yes, please. Yes, please. Do you know what? I thought that would be the best one, because it, it floats pretty well. It looks like bread. Obviously, the fish don't know what a Yorkshire pudding is. I don't suppose anybody here has even fished with Yorkshire pudding before. But that just goes to show you, no fancy baits, no fancy smells, tastes, additives. Well, gravy, admittedly, but come on. I did neglect salt and pepper. There is a carp on Yorkshire pudding. Let's take a quick look at it. Three or four pounds, I don't know. Brilliant. There you go. That's one out of the way. Uh, what should we try for next? Let's go for carrot. A piece of carrot. Well, I'm going to look. I'm going to loose feed a few peas because I think the peas might be the tough one to get them on, I don't know. And some nice... No, <laughs> taking them, they're actually taking them. Right, look at them. Right, let's get a piece of baby carrot on. Here we go. Now this is going to sink, so I'm going to have to sort of touch ledger this one and, and feel for the bite through gravy colour covered fingers. So I, I fully expect to miss a few here. I've got a touch ledge, and what I'm going to do is just hold the line just across my fingers like this, and as soon as I feel that tug, I'm going to nail it. I can feel a bump in the line. I've just touched ledger in there. That's one. That's one. Oh, on the carrot. On the carrot. On the baby carrots. You can't use big ones, of course. Oh, there we go. Another fish. Oh, look at him boiling on the top. Come on, fish. Come on, fish. Well, that is... Even surprising for me. I mean, carrot, you wouldn't think of using those for a carp, would you, carrots? 
Yorkshire pudding, maybe, yeah, fair enough, you know, it's sort of bread based, isn't it? Let's get the net on this guy. Ah. It's not a bad fish, not a bad fish for a carrot. Get in, get in. There we go. Number two. Another common carp. Oh, a nice little fish. Three pounds, something like that. It's not size we're after, because if these guys take those baits, rest assured, a big carp will as well. Right, onwards and upwards to the peas. Now I've already thrown some in loose feeding, and I'll tell you what, they're absolutely digging and rooting on the bottom for them. Let's see if we can show you, if I get them going again. I think they were spooked by that last fish. Here comes old Charlie the Canada Goose. I think he likes peas as well. I'll put a couple of carrots in while we're at it as well. as a bit of a bonus. Right, here we go. I'm going for a double peas and gravy. I feel the double might be a little bit better. They're digging around there in the peas, definitely. So there you go. Two peas on the hook. Now I'll change the tackle because I'm right under the trees here. I've got a little spinning rod here. Baby, baby spinning rod. More match to the size of the fish I'm catching. Um, still sort of four or five pound line. So let's just cast out and feed a bit of line out there, a bit of slack. See what we can get. I better put the dinner down, it's going to go all over my lap. Look at them round it, they love these peas. I can't really tighten up to the pea too much. I should have put maybe, oh, oh, oh. I should have put a swan, a swan shot or BB shot on there just to take up the slack. There's fish there though, I can feel them swirling around the peas. Oh, there we go. That didn't take long, did it? That didn't take long. Oh yeah, he's stripping me out. God, I'll tell you what, it's more fun on this little rod than that, uh, that Avon. He's out, I'm out in the middle of the lake. He's not a big fish. He's going well. So listen, peas work, and I reckon you do good float fishing these close into the margins as well. Not expensive, you could, oh, you could buy a load off the uh, frozen, frozen supermarket shelf. And they really are digging around on the bottom for the peas, because they're all floating. Oh, I'll tell you what, this one's going well. Especially on this tiny rod. Come on, net time. That's three done. Is it going to be the pea fish? The pea fish is in the net and has bitten the dust. I tell you what, even that Canada goose has had his head on the bottom out there digging up the peas, so he must like them. And there's the fish to go with it. Right, three done. What have we got? Roast beef, roast potatoes. I'm going to go with the roast potatoes. I think the beef might be a tough one, but then they eat lunch of meat and stuff like that, so we'll find out. So roast potatoes are next on the menu. Right, let's get the old spuds going. These are the nice little roasties. Look, they're lovely little ones. Well, they tasted all right to me earlier on anyway, even though they're cold now. I'm going to slice these up into small bite-sized segments. A big carp. Years ago, we used to use boiled potatoes, what's called a part boiled potato for big carp. When I say big, double-figure fish we used to fish four years ago. And to stop it casting off the hook, these boiled potatoes, we used to put a, a crust pad on the bottom of it. That's going to be another program, hopefully. Another totally awesome fishing retro bait. So there you go. I've got all those cut up small, and I'm going to scatter them right in the margins, just down here. Because I know they're down there digging on the peas anyway. Look, and you can see them swirling, eating. Yes, you cannot believe it yourself, and I can't really believe it, but they're eating roast potatoes. Let's get one on the hook and see if we can catch one. There we go, onto the hook, a few loose samples, I'm free lining these, here comes the Canada Goose, I don't know who's going to win the fish or the Canada Goose, there's a potato going in, one roast potato, it's just sinking slowly to the bottom, and they are all over it. There we go, potato fish, potato fish is on, <laughs> oh please stay on, be... oh, I'll tell you what, it's not a bad fish this one. That's not a bad fish. That is 
is not a bad fish for this little buggy whip rod. A little bit more drag on this one, I think, in a minute. That's a better fish. That's a nice one. That's even got me mildly excited. But I always did say, parboiled potato is good, so roast, roast potato's got to work. Because I caught 35 years ago, we used potato for carp because there was no such thing as boilies, they weren't even invented. You ought to get yourself one of these little buggy whip rods, it's a bit of sport. Oh, he don't want to give up, does he? Get him. Now, that's a bit of a better one. That's better, that's better. A bit more like it, a bit more like it. Now, that is. I have to say, my first roast potato carp. And that's not a bad one either. That is not a bad one. Lovely markings on it, beautiful scales. Right, here we go. Final point to prove anyway. Nice slab of roast beef, I'm breaking it off. I've already chummed them up with what's left of the peas, the carrots, the roast beef, bits of gravy. I'm going to hook that three times. It's a bit like going sea fishing now. There we are. A lovely piece of roast beef. Who could resist that? I'll tell you what, certainly not my Jack Russell and that would be some scrap, wouldn't it? Imagine trying to get the hook out. Let's going to lower this down there carefully and just see what occurs. I know the fish are there. They're boiling around on all those peas I put in. There's the swell where he's looked at it. Are they going to take the roast beef? bumping it. There he's on. There's your roast beef. Oh yes please. Yes please. Roast, roast beef as well. I love it. I love it. I do. Oh, what's it going to be next? Chicken tikka, kebabs. That's a nice little fish. This is a really, really good little rod. I've caught some big fish on this before, but this is the first time I think I've used it for carp fishing. Bit more drag on this one, I think. In comes the roast beef carp. Maybe, maybe, maybe. There we go. That completes the set, I know. No monster, three, three and a half pounds, something like that. But I'll tell you what, I've seen some five and six and seven pounders down here. Having one last go with what's left of the Yorkshire pudding. And I came down here off the dam wall and I got quite a good fish actually. Just keep all your options open, try and think outside the ballpark, don't give up on anything, baits, and get back to basics a bit, you know. There you go. Now that's that's not a bad carp, is it really? A Yorkshire pudding carp. We've closed out, that is another edition of Totally Awesome Fishing. It's the way forward, roasting us, and this is the Yorkshire Pudding Guy. Looks like he needs a few more actually, he's a bit thin, isn't he? I wonder what's on next week's menu.